Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And we're going to talk about understanding non-player characters' foundational, emotional, and spiritual grounding. Alright, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the best way to, to put it, right? And basically, we as Dungeon Masters, we are responsible for... Uh, for putting on screen compelling, realistic um, non-player characters in our game. So we're building a world, and one part of that world is our non-player characters. And these non-player characters need to seem realistic. And so in under, in order to understand how to present realistic, compelling non-player characters, we have to understand what makes a person realistic, genuine, and, and compelling, right? So I'm going to point you to a video done by Anna Akana. If you're not aware, it's in the doobly-doo below. Uh, and it's called Three Reasons You're a Mess. All right? Uh, and it's a great video. And it teaches a lot of things that dungeon masters need to understand. All right? So let's talk about this. All right. Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to talk about Anna Akana's video. And then we're going to, talk, we're going to juice it for, for dungeon master points and for dun, 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 Dungeons and Dragons commentator points. All right? So let's get into it. All right. So Anna Khan is a very interesting lady. Uh, she is um, she's a she was a YouTuber. I think she was a YouTuber first. She's a musician and she's an actor. Okay. If anybody saw Jupiter's Legacy on uh, Netflix, not many people did. Uh, it was not great, but uh, her she did a great job in it. Um, and basically, she's an actress, so she's been in a few things. I think she has a big project coming up soon. But she's kind of graduating from the YouTube space. But she's been on YouTube for a while, and she has a YouTube uh, channel where she just commentates on life. Uh, it's slice of life commentary, right? Um, and actually, more than that, <laughs> one thing that's absolutely fascinating is she said the quiet part loud. I love when people say the quiet part loud. She said, my channel is just me, pa at this point, my channel is just me parroting my psychologist. Fascinating, right? Now, why would that matter, right? So, first of all, Anna Akana is, an, is a charismatic, confident, intelligent person, right? And so, one of the things is, first of all, I think Dungeons and Dragons helps you to understand that charismatic, charisma, confidence, and intelligence matter, and that you've got to get yourself to the point where you are maximizing all of those attributes in yourself, because it's all that the world cares about now, right? And if you want to be on top, Right? You've got to maximize those aspects of yourself. And if you don't, you're going to be on the bottom, period. Okay? All right. So, uh, Anna talks... Uh, so, basically, she does this video, right? And and this is interesting. Why do I listen to Anna Akana? She, I listen to... Vert, actually, at this point, I listen to every video she does. I really like it, right? For several reasons. Okay, so first of all, let's say this. Anna Akana is almost constantly wrong. I think her psychologist is giving her terrible advice and wasting every dollar she is spending. And the reason why is, is if you listen to Anaconda, month after month, year after year, she's never getting better. Right? She has the same problems all the time, right? And so she tells you what her, her psychologist is telling her, but she never, she's always the same. And actually, she'll come and say, I just made this mistake that literally she should have avoided because she was given the answer by her psychologist. Um, like a year and a half ago, right? Like so, so she's constantly wrong, right? So why would I listen to somebody who's constantly wrong, right? Um, it's a good question. I listen to a lot of people I think are wrong. Here's why, right? One, she's asking the right questions. That I can't tell you how powerful questions are in today's world, right? Asking the right questions is a big deal. Here's the next one. When she says something. It matters, and she has the ability to make people listen. Okay, now how does she do that? Right. Well, here's the thing: when you say something, you must make it compelling, interesting, exciting, shocking. Right. You have to. Today, it's not enough to have the right answer. Right. You know, you can have the right answer, but if you can't get people to listen, it doesn't matter. Right. It's a it's a tree falling in the forest and nobody's there, right? The world only listens when you are compelling, interesting, um, exciting, shocking, right? Uh, fantastic, right? 
and the re- and so and she knows how to get a message across, right? So, so basically, she's saying the wrong things. She's asking the right question. She's giving her answer, which is her answers are always wrong. I, I'd like, I'd say ninety nine percent of the time she's wrong. Okay, but she says it in a way that makes you listen, right? And so, if you listen to her, you realize how to make people listen. And that's, that's fascinating. I think that's really, really interesting, right? So I, I really dig her content. I think she's a really smart lady, and uh, she's definitely worth your listen, right? So in this video, she gets into three reasons you're a mess. And what this is is why are you broken as a person, right? So And so she dives into it, right? And she says it's the ego, it's the shadow, and it's the inner child. And this is all nonsense that her psychologist has given her, right? And I, I will tell you right now, I'm starting to be very incredibly frustrated with the psychological world, right? And the reason why is I feel what they did was they found a solution to help people with mental health and then they hit it behind the, the biggest paywall in history. So the vast majority have a, the vast majority of people have a family, right? doesn't matter if that family is chosen or their blood, right? Everybody's got a family. So everybody runs into issues where they're like, oh my gosh, I need help. My, I need mental health, right? Help. And so basically, then they go and they start talking to a psychologist at 200 plus per hour, right? And then as soon as they start talking to a psychologist, they realize, oh my gosh, everybody around me is bro, is just as broken, has many mental health issues just like me, and they need to get them solved, right? So if you have a tiny family, like just one other person you care about and one other person you care about, three people, that means you need $600 a week to deal with your mental health issue. Or you need to be comfortable enough to say, I'm going to deal with my mental health issues. I know that the other people I love and care about have need the same help, but I don't have $600 a week, right? $2,400 a month. Who has that, right? Nobody. And so while I don't think all their advice is completely worthless, I think they've built a solution where only the wealthy get help, right? And, and can even afford this type of help if it's even useful, right? Like, and so... Even if they've actually built something substantial and useful, they made sure that the, the paywall on it is so high, the vast majority of people will never will never get that help. And and as an industry, I I think I'm going to start to roll hard in the paint against that industry. I just I'm super disappointed in that industry overall, right? And so so basically, and also I watch Anna Conant. She's constantly at her therapist or psycho at her psychologist, right? And um, and the reality is, it never seems to help, right? Like so, like I have tangible proof, like that somebody who has all the money in the world to get help is not getting it, right? So even if you and and honestly, and also tangible proof that people who don't have money, they're not even going to be able to remotely get this kind of help. So when I'm looking at this, I'm like, what is she saying and what is she doing here, right? And I realized what Anna Akana is really saying and doing is she is specifically like saying, why am I broken? And then trying to fix her broken state. And I'm like, this all seems really odd and weird to me, right? Now, why does it seem odd and weird to me? Well, all this stuff is already fixed for me. I know why I'm broken, right? I'm a human being. I'm flawed, right? The Bible told me, you know, you're depraved from the start. You're, you have sin rooted in you. And it, and the only way you're going to get any, is any sanctification is through Jesus Christ. You need salvation, and then you need to read the Word, which will give you a life path. It will give you a specific model to live your life by, right? And and you need to follow that, and you will become better better through sanctification through Jesus Christ, right? So everything she's asking and all the solutions she's looking for, I already have. They were given to me at 15 when I was in a Baptist church, right? Like, and you know, and every and. Basically, I've just been reading my word and going and getting God's word every Sunday and taking my family there and leading my family as a Christian and being a husband and being a father. And it does everything Anna's trying to do, right? Every single thing. It solves every problem. It answers the question. It gives the right answer, right? And then, it, you know, and it, it it's delivered to me in a way that sticks, right? And so when I look at Anna, I'm thinking, how do we how do we process this? as dungeon masters, right? Well, the reality is the the people we put into the world, the people we put into Waterdeep, the people we put into Phandalin, the people we put into Neverwinter, they either have a, they have a god and they're dedicated they they come in different states. They have a god and they're dedicated to that god 
and every they will know the answer to why they're broken from the beginning and their sacred texts and their clerics all of that is going to help them build a better life and they're going to have what they need right and then there are people who are faithless who do not believe in the gods and are trying to make it on their own in this world and then you just get eaten alive by every like person who's saying i could give you this answer but then a year and a half, two and a half, three years later, you're still dealing with the same issues because the because the answers were empty, right? And they, they, they didn't deliver, right? And those kind of people are broken. They don't want to be broken. Anaconda doesn't want to be broken. She doesn't want to be asking now, after years of th- psychology and therapy, why she, you know, why she's still, you know, why she's still so broken and still dealing with so many issues. And the same issues, like for her, mostly relationship issues. Like she just can't, build a strong relationship. She says like she says it flat out all the time, right? And you know, and this is after years of having the answer, but it never produces anything. And for me, like I was like, hey, how do I love someone? Right. And the Bible said, do this. It's worked for 29 years. Right? Like uh and Icon is paying for information at a rate of probably two hundred to six hundred dollars an hour. And she's been getting the same answer for three years and still can't build a relationship. Right. Like and so I uh, you know and one it's it's hard for her because she's being open and she's sharing this information, right? Um, and you know, and I feel bad for her. I want her to get there, right? Like, but when we craft these people who are w- living in Neverwinter, ne- living in Fandolin, living in Water Deep, you can have these people who desperately are trying to unbreak themselves and end up with people who are charging them for an answer that is hollow and never works, right? So, and I think we. We need, and if you look at Anna, you're going to understand this, right? I've I've understand it better than I ever have. And then there are people who dedicate themselves to the deities, but don't follow what the deities say. Don't interact in the correct way with the clerics, and are not true to what they say they believe. That's another type of person. I don't have an example for you of of that for you on the internet. I might find one at one point, but I think it's 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 important for us to understand. For our non-player characters in Neverwinter and Fandolin and Waterdeep, those people are trying to unbreak themselves, right? Some of them have a true source that can actually unbreak a problem that's in us, right? Some of them are desperately paying high prices to get it, but are never getting it. And some of them are claiming a belief that they're not faithful to, right? And so things don't work out because they're not even being truthful to themselves, right? And I think understanding this and understanding how people get broken, how they try to unbreak themselves, what the effectiveness of that unbreak, that breakability, what the effectiveness of this, the answer is, is important. Last, if you are a D&D commentator, because I have a few D&D commentators who are all up on this channel, uh, you know, like, um, hello, Condor DM. <laughs> so one, you should definitely watch Anaconda. And the reason why is, uh, Condor DM is a great example of this. He has great content and he has no ability to say it in a con- in a compelling way, right? I don't think the content that is on Condor DM's channel is any less useful or good than mine. But I have 1,800 subs and he has 200. And the reason why is I understand when I speak, the way I deliver the content has to be compelling, exciting, um, shocking, and... Uh, and compelling, right? And you and Anaconda knows how to do that. And I watch people who know how to do that, right? And then I you know, take little tips and little things and try to make what I'm saying exciting for you. And Condor DM, I think you have some good ideas. I think you need to work on your delivery, right? And and get there the way Anaconda gets there. And the reason why is Condor DM, I think you have a lot of the right answers and nobody cares because you're not making the way you deliver it compelling and exciting and and, and adventurous and playful and all the things that Anaconda does, right? And also, just so you guys are aware, if I, if I say something in a particular way and you're like, why did he say it that way? This world does not care if you have the right answer. You need to have the right answer and you need to be able to say it in an exciting, compelling, interesting, shocking way. It's just the shape of the world now, right? And I don't want to be at the bottom. I want to be at the top, right? And I want Condor DM to be at the top too. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking, subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.